You're looking at the highest scoring team in the National Football League, the Buffalo Bills. Though it is hardly unexpected that they are unbeaten, the ease with which they defeated their first three opponents is a surprise, for it included the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bills have been averaging nearly 40 points per game to their opponent's 16. As usual, the Bills have the most awesome running game in the league, and it appears O.J. Simpson may even attain the unattainable by besting his own yardage record of 2003. Before the game, he was already more than halfway to the 1,000 mark. Buffalo is off to its best start in 10 years. That year, 1965, the Bills won the AFL championship under Lou Saban. The Colts have been impressive even while losing two of their three games. Against the Rams the previous week, they led well into the final quarter before being overtaken. This is a very young team with a promising future under new head coach Ted Marchabroda. Youngsters like Burt Jones, Bill Olds, Lydell Mitchell, Glenn Doughty, Freddie Scott and Roger Carr lead an offense which can put points on the board in clusters. So it's the young, improving Colts of Baltimore versus Buffalo's powerful Bills in the NFL Game of the Week. The biggest surprise in Buffalo so far this year is the showing of the defense, which has excelled despite a series of crippling injuries to the secondary. On this sunny day in Baltimore, Maryland, they had their work cut out for them against Burt Jones and the cold offense. This was quickly evident on the game's first series, when Burt Jones passed over the middle to uncovered Glenn Doughty. Fourth-year veteran receiver from Michigan had taken the football 53 yards to the Buffalo 11. Two plays later, Lydell Mitchell swept to his left and, despite Tony Green's efforts, squeezed into the end zone. Baltimore had struck for a seven-point lead with only two minutes, 50 seconds gone. <music> Buffalo went nowhere on their first offensive series, and disaster occurred when on fourth down, Marv Bateman's punt was spiked cleanly by number 55, Dan Dickel, who made the recovery and returned it all the way to the Buffalo 20. Dickel, a second-year linebacker from Iowa, had given his team a terrific early break in this game, and this kind of reckless all-out charge is what coaches look for, for the very valuable special team. Unfortunately, with a golden opportunity at their opponent's 20, the Colts couldn't score as Burt Jones, under pressure, threw behind Glenn Doughty open over the middle. Tony Linhart attempted three points from 40 yards out, but the ball narrowly missed the upright. The score remains seven to nothing. However, on the very next play, Buffalo and O.J. Simpson gave Baltimore still another chance. Tom McLeod recovered O.J.'s fumble, and now the Colts had another crack at increasing their lead, this time from the 30. And this time, Baltimore wouldn't be denied. Lydell Mitchell took a Burt Jones pitch out and swept right for 15 yards. The area of biggest improvement for Baltimore has been their offensive line, and George Coons obtained from Atlanta is the main reason for it. Mitchell's sweep was led by number 75, the former Notre Dame All-American, one of the finest offensive tackles in pro football. Now from the 10, Mitchell went smack up the middle into the end zone for the touchdown that increased Baltimore's lead to 14 to nothing.
Mitchell's second score seemed to come on individual effort alone. But a look at the play from our end zone camera reveals superb blocking by the cold offensive line. Down now by 14 points, Buffalo behind Joe Ferguson took to the air. Pass to tight end Paul Seymour brought the ball to midfield. And then O.J. Simpson made his first contribution of the day by taking a Ferguson bullet for 14 yards. However, when O.J. stayed on the ground, a bevy of Colts was waiting. Here's the reason why. The Colts concocted a special defense designed to stop the juice. The two outside backers played up on the line, corners in tight, and middle linebacker Mike Curtis keying on Simpson. It was effective so far in stopping the run, as it did here to Jim Braxton, who happens to be the AFC's second leading runner behind O.J. Baltimore had stopped Braxton on third down, so Buffalo was forced to try for a field goal by John Leipold from 44 yards out. The successful kick made the score 14 to three. On the next series, Baltimore made a costly mistake when Jones overthrew Raymond Chester and Dwight Harrison intercepted. Harrison, who leads the American Conference in thefts with five, brought the ball all the way back to the 20. But a clipping penalty negated his return, and Buffalo took possession near midfield. Baltimore remained in their run-oriented defensive formation that to this point had held Simpson to nine yards. The key to the special defense was number 32, Mike Curtis, who followed O.J.'s every move. When Fred Cook sacked Joe Ferguson on third down, it appeared Baltimore had held. But a defensive holding penalty on Mike Curtis gave Buffalo new life, and the Bills quickly exploited it. J.D. Hill's leaping catch and a roughing the passer penalty on the same play moved the ball to the Baltimore 12. Opponents' mistakes had helped Buffalo greatly, but here O.J. Simpson took command. O.J.'s fifth touchdown of the season brought his team to within four points of the Colts. Baltimore ignored the pressure and kept coming. On a drive that began at their own 20, Burt Jones instituted a tough inside running attack spearheaded by Lydell Mitchell, Bill Olds, and Don McCauley, who got the hard yardage through the middle. With the middle softened, Lydell Mitchell exploited the flanks. Finally, from the 25, with the Bills reeling from the run, Jones found Mitchell naked and free in the middle for six points. The young Colts had refused to fold and had brought their lead back to 11 over Buffalo.
Another look at the touchdown shows how open Mitchell was through the middle of the Bills' defense as he took it in for his third touchdown of the half. With 21 points, the Colts had already scored as many points as any team this season against the Bills, though only 18 minutes into the game. The Buffalo offense, however, was still far short of its average, and with two nearly identical drives, they would take the lead. Both drives were started with passes for good yardage. Ferguson then slipped the ball to O.J., who broke free for 23 yards. Mixing his plays well, and with the Colts ever mindful of Simpson, Ferguson went back to the pass, hitting John Holland in front of Bruce Laird, and Buffalo was in close. To finish the drive, Ferguson, figuring the Colts to be looking for O.J., gave instead to Jim Braxton, who powered over Rick Volk, number 21, and Buffalo had cut the lead to 21-17. Drive one was now complete, and after holding the Colts without a first down, Ferguson began the twin drive that would give Buffalo the lead. Again, it was started by a pass for good yardage, this time to Holland for 15. Then, just as on the first drive, O.J. was loose for 25 yards, this time around right end. Although they really didn't need to be reminded, the two long runs by Simpson had the Colts ever wary of the run and helped set up the pass. And just as he had done on the first drive, Ferguson used a big O.J. run to set up his air attack. The Colts were powerless to stop the NFL's most productive offense. It sometimes seems as though only a drop pass can stay the Buffalo offense. But even that is a mere stay of execution for the defense, and several plays after J.D. Hill dropped this one, Ferguson faked a run to Braxton, number 34, then hit a wide-open John Holland to put Buffalo on top at halftime, 24 to 21. In a half void of defense, the teams had put 45 points on the board and collected nearly 450 yards total offense. On Ferguson's first pass of the new half, Hill again had a ball go off his fingertips, this time right to Ray Oldham. This was most uncharacteristic behavior for the usually sure-handed Hill, and with the Bills' other wide receiver, Bobby Chandler, nursing a rib injury, Buffalo might have been hurting at this position. But John Holland would more than fill the bill for the Bills later in the game. Meanwhile, the Colts, thanks to Lydell Mitchell, would soon take advantage of the turnover. Carrying on almost every play, Mitchell brought the Colts to the Buffalo 13. But on this play, Baltimore guard Bob Van Dyne was caught holding. Looking at the play from the end zone camera reveals that he had latched down to number 73, Earl Edwards, who made the play despite the foul, which moved the Colts back to the 23-yard line. But from there, Jones went to Mitchell anyway. The pass to Mitchell, his fourth touchdown of the game, should have come as no surprise to the Bills, for the Colts are fond of going to Mitchell in passing situations. And he had set a record last season with 72 catches, the most ever by a running back. Looking at the play again reveals that a good play action fake to Bill Olds had helped set Mitchell free. There was still very little defense being played, and the Colts had reclaimed the lead 28-24. It would not take the high-powered Bills long to get the lead back. Ferguson hit Holland on the sideline. Doug Nettles missed knocking the ball down. Volk missed knocking Holland down. And the chase was on.
The play covered 63 yards, and from the three, Ferguson popped one to Jim Braxton, who had beaten Baltimore linebacker Tom McLeod. Braxton's second score of the game gave Buffalo the lead again. The extra point ballooned the score to 31-28 Buffalo, with 20 minutes still to play. The Baltimore offense has vastly improved this season. They came right back with Mitchell again, the workhorse. The big play of the drive came when a play fake to Olds did not fool the Bills' pass coverage, and Jones was forced to run, something he does very well. Jones gained 25 yards to midfield and then found a couple of ways to defeat the Bills' rush. Here he rolled right to get time and found Raymond Chester, who outfought number 26, Ed Jones. Jones turned to argue and Chester escaped for additional yardage. Another way Jones found to beat the Bills' rush was to unload quickly. There were no spectacular gainers coming now, but the Colts were moving on a time-consuming drive that head coaches loved to see and that the Bills could not stop. Lydell Mitchell, who would gain over 100 yards rushing for the game, carried to a first and goal at the nine. But after two Mitchell carries brought the ball to the Buffalo two, Jones on a third and goal could find no one open and was stopped short of the goal line when he tried to scramble it in. Number 43, Tony Green, made the touchdown-saving tackle. It was another big play by last season's most valuable player in Buffalo, for the Colts were forced to settle for a Tony Linhard field goal. And the Bills, who could have been behind by four, needing a touchdown to win, now were in a tie ball game at 31-all, and any score could win it for them. Ferguson went with his strength, running O.J. on four straight carries, bringing his game total to 127 yards. Finally, Ferguson attempted to go up top, and when all receivers were covered, ran for it. The only thing airborne was Colt defensive end Fred Cook, number 72, who obviously believes a quarterback in the open field is fair game. Cook convinced Ferguson that running was better handled by running backs. But the Colts were waiting when Simpson tried it again. With second and 12 and Simpson a marked man, Ferguson dropped straight back and lofted one for tight end Paul Seymour. The play gained 26 yards, and Ferguson next avoided a blitz by Tom McLeod and found Braxton for 16 more. Perhaps a little rusty now after two passes, Simpson was held for a short gain on first down when forced to break outside where cold pursuit and unsure footing caught up with him. On second down, Ferguson misfired on a pass, ringing up third and goal from the eight, where the Bills got a break when Nelson Muncy got wrapped up with J.D. Hill and was called for interference. The call brought up a first and goal on the three and really took the kick out of the Colts, for on the very next play, Braxton slipped outside a middle bunch Baltimore defense for his third touchdown of the game, the Bills now led 38 to 31, and though Baltimore got near midfield on their possession, they were forced to punt. O.J. Simpson then ran for seven, seven, nine, two, and two yards to effectively run out the clock and bring his total for the game to 159 yards. That's a fairly common occurrence these days for the brilliant Simpson, but what's uncommon is the fact that in just four games, O.J. has nearly reached the 700-yard plateau. 
and another 2,000-yard season seems certainly in his sights. With O.J. leading the way, the Bills have racked up 148 points already this season, an average of 37 points a game. Though the Buffalo defense had its worst game of the year, with an offense so high-powered, it's going to take an awful lot of points to beat the Bills and keep them out of Super Bowl X in January.